What's going on, everybody? American Football Network here with another video today. And today we're bringing you guys our Notre Dame preview prediction video. But before we get started, make sure you guys like and subscribe. Comment those thoughts and opinions down below. Help me reach that goal of 1,400 subscribers by the end of August. Today we're joined by the football expert. How are you doing today? Doing well, doing well. Talking about them Irish, so we'll see. Yep, he's a Notre Dame fan on the show today. Where can everybody find you at? Uh, you can go on YouTube, type in the football expert, will pop right up, and then um, Twitter, but I don't really do too much on X and stuff like that. So, yeah, you can type, find me and type me up there on X as the football expert. So. All right, so make sure you go check him out. Help us both out. Check out the channel we run together, College Football Roundup and help us reach our subscriber goals over there as well. But today, we're talking Notre Dame. Last year went 10-3 and three overall um, with losses to Ohio State at home, 17-14, to 14, when you forgot to put 11 men on the field. Then you lost at Louisville. That was just a weird game um, under the lights in Louisville. As the Clemson fan, we've gone there in that similar situation before, and, and I've been nervous about it. Um, and then lost at Clemson 31-23. So, but but had some good wins, beat USC 48-20, to beat NC State on the road 45-24, um, and then crushed Oregon State in the Sun Bowl 40-8. to What are your thoughts on Notre Dame and their performance last season as a whole, and what do you expect to be different rolling into this, this season? So, in reference to last season, last season was definitely a disappointment. Uh, started off with the Ohio State game. Um, you're just – there were so many opportunities. It was the 11 men on the field thing – or, well, 10 men on the field and not putting the 11th out there. It was the dropped pick, uh, the dropped pick um, on that drive right there. Um, it was the Audric, uh, es- the lack of the Audric Estime run play there on second down and instead throwing a screen pass and saving Ohio State 40 seconds. It was a myriad of things in the Ohio State game that all went awry. Then you had a tough, tough game against Duke. Then another tough game against Louisville. That one you didn't pull out. Duke you barely pulled out. Um, and then uh, Louisville you got killed. And then it was kind of it was kind of a reset there against Southern Cal, where you just smacked Pretty Boy around. And I say that as as a Bears fan. Um, and you, you smacked Kayla Williams upside down. I think he had, what, four picks that game? Maybe four. Something like that. He had at least three. Yeah, so uh, it was a terrible game for him, um, and Notre Dame rebounded from there. Then Clemson, it was screw Tyler from Spartanburg. Um, I still would have played. <laughs> I, um, if that call didn't happen, I, I don't know if Clemson wins that game. Uh, He's a, he resurrected the rest of the season for He really did. He really did. If he had called before with uh, Florida State, you guys you never know what could have happened. Uh, but either way, um, when it comes to this Notre Dame team, it was disappointing. Sam Hartman did not have a great season. Uh, he wasn't terrible, but for what his stats were at uh, Wake Forest and stuff like that, you just expected more. Uh, the wide receiver department was – awful um you had uh, your best wide receiver was jordan Faison, who is a walk-on lacrosse player um and that's just unacceptable uh you should have a lot better production from the wide receiver room uh with guys like chris mitchell and even bo collins even jordan Faison uh coming in this year now having a full year and a uh stuff like that and he's still a lacrosse scholarship technically but um, and you have some other players coming in like Cam Williams, the five-star wide receiver uh, from Glen Ellen. Um, so it's going to be a better and year. Not only that, but uh, Great House. He got injured last year, did he not, before the season? Yeah, he'll be back. He was, he was dealing with a hamstring issue, it seemed like, most of the year, especially in the beginning, especially against Ohio State particularly when it comes to like games that matter. Um, so, yeah, Great House should be around. Uh, and he may be your best wide receiver. I he, between him and Chris Mitchell, I think is kind of the top wide receiver. And then you have a, a amazing uh, t- receiving tight end and Mitchell Evans, who went out early in the season uh, with the ACL tear. Um, so 
Riley Leonard, starting quarterback, you should be better in that department as well. So we'll see where this team ends up. Uh, but I think that we're looking in a better spot than we were last year. A little bit of an improvement here from Freeman. I agree, yeah. I, just looking overall at the roster, you only returned three starters on offense and only five on defense. But it feels like you're, you're still improved a little bit just because of, like you said, how bad the wide receivers are. They're going to be better. Quarterback most likely going to improve. You bring back the big pieces in the secondary and Watts and Morrison. Um, and, I mean, offensive line, you lose a lot, but Notre Dame always has a pretty solid offensive line. So I expect them to be fine this year. Um, I don't expect any any major step backs or anything like that. But let's go ahead and jump into the schedule this year for the Fighting Irish. So they start off week one at a and a game that the Aggies are actually favored in. What are your thoughts on this game, and what is your prediction? Um, I would say when it comes to this game, when it comes to looking at the environment and Kyle Field, game day being there, all of that stuff going on, it's going to be a tough environment. It's week one. It's in a tough place. It's not going to be an easy game. Uh, you got a lot of work to do. Riley Leonard playing his old coach, obviously a lot of storylines there. Um, so at the end of the day, I just, when I'm looking at these two programs, when I'm looking at a first year head coach uh, at Texas A&M and Mike Elko, and I'm looking at uh, Marcus Freeman in his third year, it better be Marcus Freeman in his third year. Um, I would be very shocked and disappointed in this Notre Dame team that just simply has more talent, has better pieces, is more developed um, on all sides of the ball, but particularly on defense um, with, Yes, you only bring back five defensive starters, but mind you, it is Howard Cross, who is a second-team All-American. It's Benjamin Morrison, a first-team All-American, and Xavier Watts, first-team All-American and a Thorpe Award winner. Um, so, like, these are the best of the best on the team that you brought back. Um, and I don't know why it didn't put this on your uh, thing, but uh, Jack Kaiser was a starter last year, so technically we do have six. Uh, but he did play behind J.D. Bertrand. Um, so it, he he played as many snaps as anybody else on that defense. So uh, there is that. But when it comes to this team, I'm going to pick a win here for um, Notre Dame, mostly just because of the inexperience of this Texas a and team and the unknown that Connor Wegman is at quarterback, even in comparison to Ryan Leonard transferring schools. I'm actually going to go the opposite way here. I think that Wegman is a a very good is going to be a very good quarterback. I think he showed a lot of good flashes last year. Um, I think he's in a favorable offensive system. I think Elko is going to have that very talented defense, um, and, and very good shape and pretty tight, um, defensively. And I, that's that's the one spot I disagree with your point on is I think I think A and M is actually the more talented team. I think Notre Dame's more developed at all positions, but I think A&M has more talent on their team than Notre Dame does. And I think, to me, that's going to be the difference. I think Elko's a better coach than Marcus Freeman is. Um, and when you look at when you look at, at Marcus Freeman, they've struggled in, in rough environments a little bit over the years. You look just last year at Clemson, that was a sold-out game. They struggled, particularly offense struggles in those games the most. They struggled in that game offensively and then you look at Louisville those were the two toughest environments they played in all year last year and they lost both of those games by pretty good margins um so I think that an A&M is going to be without a doubt more hostile than either one of those places were it's already one of the loudest stadiums in, the, in America and then now you add in the fact it's week one your first game of the new season with a new coach those fans are going to be excited they're going to be loud and I think that I don't know that. I just feel like A&M wins this game in a very close game. So moving on to week two, you get Northern Illinois. Thoughts on this one? Uh, Northern Illinois should be a better team in the MAC this year compared to uh, most MAC schools. So it's not going to be an easy game. Uh, but in ter uh, Ontario uh, Brown is their top tier running back, first team All MAC last year. Um, and just honestly, if that's their best player, and it is. I just don't see that being super effective against Notre Dame. Uh, Howard Cross and Riley Mills up the middle, you're just not going to get much run off of Notre Dame this year. Uh, you're going to have to go around the edges and stuff like that, and I just don't see it here from this Northern Illinois team. 
I think also Notre Dame has a little bit too much firepower running back and a guy like Jeremiah Love who can just break one off uh, 8, 75, 80 yards at a time. I agree. I think this should be a, a not an easy game, but one that Notre Dame handles um, fairly easily. Although if they lose that first game at AM, I could see this potentially turning into a game, uh, one of the Toledo game from a, from a few years ago, Marshall game, something like that where it's like, all right, they lose. Northern Illinois doesn't come out and beat them. Notre Dame comes out and beats themselves. I could I could see that possibly, but I also think that at this point in his career, Marcus Freeman is just too too developed as a coach and too disciplined. Like he wouldn't he he's going to be on a lot tighter leash. That kind of thing isn't going to happen. You wouldn't think. Now it's still possible, but a lot less likely you see it happen. And I just I don't think Northern Illinois, like you said, is going to have much success when their main offensive player is a running back. Then you go on the road to Purdue. What are your thoughts on this one? Um, Purdue, if <sighs> Purdue is just not a good team this year, this isn't the same Purdue team that you have under Jeff Brom and we'll get into Jeff Brom in a little bit, but I just don't see this Purdue team having the guys to be able to compete with Notre Dame. They have Hudson Carr at quarterback. So that's interesting, I guess. Um, but outside of that, I just don't see this Purdue team competing. I don't either. I don't see them doing much unless you beat AM and m and, and end up being ranked top five and go in there. Then you're probably going to get smacked by 30 points. But yeah. I don't – yeah, I just don't see Purdue being able to be very competitive in this game. I think Notre Dame wins this one pretty easily. Then you next up you get Miami, Ohio. Thoughts on this one? Bad. They're a bad match school. They're, they're just now. <laughs> they're, yeah, they're not I agree. Yep, without a doubt, they're not very good, and in, in their own, um, in their own conference, I don't expect them to be able to compete with a team like my, uh, like Notre Dame. Then moving on, you get Louisville this year at home. This should be a little bit easier for you. Thoughts on this one? Um, one of two things is going to happen. Jeff Brom's still going to have our number and being anno uh, be annoying, and it's going to be a close game down to the end. Or two, which is. I think the more likely scenario, maybe it's a little my Notre Dame homer bias, but um, I think that this is a smackdown. I think that like you're going to get like this is the team that beat us last year. This is the team that burst our playoff hopes. You're you're going to smack them. You're going to put up forty, and they're going to put up seventeen. Um, I could very easily see that happening because this is not this is not a Louisville team with a bunch of depth to it. Uh, they lost some pieces. Don't get me wrong, losing Jack Plummer does not matter whatsoever. But Tyler Shuck is basically a glass bottle that's just waiting to be broken. Um, so, yeah, I just don't see it from this Louisville team. I think that Notre Dame gets a win here. I, going one of two scenarios. I agree. I think I think Notre Dame wins here. I could see this game being somewhat competitive because Tyler Shuck, I mean, he was a great quarterback at Texas Tech two years ago. He was. And he's got – I mean, he's still got that potential, obviously. So – um, you know, if somehow he's able to play, have a game like that, I could still, I could see it close, but I still think Notre Dame wins. I just think they have too much talent at the end of the day. Then you get Stanford at home. Thoughts on this one? Uh, this one, Stanford is awful. They may be the worst Power Five team in college football this year. Um, so yeah, they're awful. A, a team like Northern Illinois or Miami of Ohio could beat the Stanford team. I agree. And when I look at this game, Notre Dame's strength on defense is the secondary. The only thing Stanford has offensively is Iowa Man or wide receiver. They have, and when you have nothing else, you put Benjamin Morrison on him and you put Xavier Watts over the top, and there's nothing he will do. Yeah. At and all. This, and this game last year was 56 to 23. And like, I think 13 of the points or 14 of the points came in like the fourth quarter when the game was like. This was not a close game last year. Uh, no, it's not at all. Not at all. So I just – I don't see it. Win for Notre Dame. Then you go on the road to Georgia Tech. This may be a tough game for you. What are your thoughts on this one? I, I agree. This could be a tough game. This could be a game in which Notre Dame, well, they're going to need to be ready, be on upset alert. But the problem is with upset alert this year, you just don't play anybody. So it's just – you're not really looking forward to anybody – Unless if like Florida State is like super good, but they're two weeks away. You got to deal with Navy in between that. 
I just don't see Georgia Tech being able to sneak up on Notre Dame, but I do see Georgia Tech playing this game close for two, maybe three quarters. I, I Brent Key, great head coach, great uh, find for Georgia Tech. I just I think Georgia Tech plays this close, but I just don't see it like finishing with the Georgia Tech win. I think they do play it close though. I agree. I think Georgia Tech ends up losing this game by like 10 points. They're just the team when they're playing up against teams that everybody knows is better than them and that they're supposed to get killed in. They never they never really get crushed. They always find a way to stay stay in it and, and keep it a close game. And I think that they can do that in this game. I just don't see them. I just don't see them getting within three points of Notre Dame. Um, I just think Notre Dame's a better football team and has too much for them. Next up, you get Navy. You get to play this one in East Rutherford, New Jersey. What are your thoughts on this game? You have to play Army and Navy this year, so I just don't think it's going to be as much of an issue. This is a bad Navy team. Coach Ken left, um, well, got fired. Um, and this team just has some struggles. I just don't see Navy being able to compete. Um, last year, the score, um, it was a little bit closer than I would have liked it, uh, but it, it was 42-3, to three, and I know that, like, that sounds a little bit like how is that closer than I would have liked it, uh, but, like, the, the Notre Dame team did struggle a little bit out of the gate, but the game was in Ireland, so I don't know. Yeah, exactly. I think it was – was it two years ago that you beat Navy by like six or three points? Two, I, I believe that was two years ago, yeah. I think so. I think it was that same year you struggled against Marshall in Toledo. And I look at I look at this team, and that was probably their best chance in a, that they're going to get for a while to beat Notre Dame. Um, like you said, you beat them 42-3 to three last year. I think you stomped again this year. Um, I just don't see Navy being able to be competitive, especially when you mentioned their head coach is gone. Um, so moving on to you get Florida State at home. This may be the highest ranked team you play all year. Honestly, when it comes to Florida State, DJ's got to show me something. I just don't see it with this Florida State team. You lost a ton of pieces, not just Jared, uh, not just um, Jordan Travis, but Jared Verse and all the pieces around them, Keon Coleman and – uh, Brandon Fish and like all sorts of things. I just, I, I just, this Florida State team, I just don't see it. Like, man, it, 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 here's the thing with the Florida State team this is kind of an in season pick. I got to see what Florida State looks like because they got too many pieces coming in and out. I just don't know what to think of Florida State. But right now, the game's at home. If the game was at Florida State, I'd consider putting it in the loss column. But I just don't know anything about Florida State when it comes to. They lost so much production. And it's not that Notre Dame didn't, but Notre Dame also has pieces that are proven, like Riley Leonard coming in and to replace that, or a Jeremiah Love and stuff like that on the running back position that I know is going to be good. Florida State is more of an unknown. I don't know if I trust Norvell to be able to reload other than a, maybe a little more rebuild. Yeah, I agree. I mean, I think Norvell, I think that he brought in – talent and he he definitely filled every hole he had in his team but I don't think he brought in the same caliber talent as he had and to me that's the difference in this game um not only that but you mentioned DJ he's even when you look at him last year he that's great Oregon State did a lot better than Clemson did under him for his for his years at Clemson but when you look at his stats they were the exact same to when he was at Clemson the year before they, he wasn't that much better. His team just performed better. They didn't rely on him the way Clemson relied on him. That's really the only difference. The dude's still the same guy he's always been. And, I mean, maybe he gets revenge on Notre Dame for the, the 2020 game uh, up there. Because, I mean, that is, when you look back, that's still the best game he's ever had in college was that yeah. game against Notre Dame. That was well, the best game he's ever had. You also had his worst game too against Notre Dame in Notre Dame. Yeah. So like, yeah, it, it's a full circle there for DJ. It's he's had his best game and his worst game. Like, oh uh, yeah, I, they would argue, and I think you would probably agree with me on this. That game finished DJ. That was the last. That was it. I actually do disagree, and I actually now that I think of it, I disagree that that was the worst game that he played in his college career. Also. I think the worst game he had is actually a game that he finished all the way through, and that was the South Carolina game that year. 
Uh, yeah, he completed 23% of his passes and just couldn't hit anything. And I think that that was the game that ended DJ because Notre Dame is a team that if you have a struggling quarterback, you expect them to shut him down. Yeah. And so, South Carolina wasn't that team. Yeah. Like South Carolina was not good and good enough to, to do that to him. Well, South Carolina but, also honor Stanley. So that also helped. <laughs> yeah. That's what they say. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I think that DJ, you know, is still the same old guy, and I just don't see it. I think Notre Dame gets the win in this game. I think it'll be a closer game. I'm not saying I think they blow them out. I, but I, I just – I don't think that, that Florida middle. State can pull out a win. I think it's like a two-touchdown win at the end of the day for the Irish. Yeah, I think you also get a middle-of-the-road, DJ. I don't think you get extremely bad. I don't think you get extremely good. I think you get kind of middle-of-the-road, DJ, a little bit, so – I agree. You know, the kind of DJ that on third and seven, when you need a big pass, he'll hit the pass, but he won't really do anything to to w- go win. He won't make any winning plays, but he won't make any to just flat out lose you the game either. Yeah. Um, yeah, so moving on next, you get Virginia, a team uh, where you lost your, your running back to somehow. <laughs> yeah. Well, that was That was a weird transfer. Tyree, well, it made sense in the sense that that's his hometown. I, I think he mm-hmm. was a Virginia fan growing up. Um, and Virginia is kind of equal on level of university prowess, like academically. Um, so I think that there was like some reasons that it made sense. And he was going to get playing time there. He was going to get some at Notre Dame, but just not as much. Um, and, yeah, this is – Tony Elliott, I still don't get that higher. Uh, to be fair, I also didn't get the Brent Pry higher at Virginia Tech and it's worked out, so I'll give him some credit. Uh, but Virginia, no, I didn't like Tony Ellett even more than I didn't like Brent Pry. Um, yeah, that Notre Dame will smack him. I didn't think that was necessarily a bad hire, partly because it got him away from us. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but I don't for you guys because when when you look at Virginia at that point in the program, it's not like there were really any better candidates to go get. I mean, when you look at Tony Elliott's resume, he's won two national championships, coached in a ton of big games, has a lot of experience. You're not really going to get anybody else that's any good. So I don't, I think it was one of those hires that it really doesn't matter who you hire off that candidate list. I think they all turn out the same, especially when you can, when you throw in the off field issues with the, that, are, that you just can't control with the shooting and just the other stuff that's gone around that I I think it'd be hard for anybody to succeed there. And I agree with you. I just don't think they're a very good team. I think Notre Dame just stomps them into the ground, much like they did Wake Forest uh, at a similar time in the season last year. I expect something similar uh, for this one. Next up, you get Army in the Bronx. What are your thoughts on this game? Um, I think that you're going to have an even better game than you did against Navy because you played a triple option team earlier this year. So you're going to get to play a few of them so or a couple of them. So I think that helps you long term because you're going to know what's coming. You're going to have seen it before. Generally, Notre Dame, you practice one week for Navy and that's all you have. It's Navy, Navy, Navy. And that's all you get. Week's done. That's it. But this year you have Navy and then you have Army. You might as well put Air Force on the calendar. Uh, called out the Marine Corps, started their team back up or something. But um, I, I think you get a pretty easy win here. The only thing I could see is a look ahead to USC, but I just I don't think that happens when it's a, a triple option. I, I just don't think you can look forward when you're like in these like those weeks of triple option from like the things that I've heard listening to podcasts or other things is that those triple option weeks are so different than any other week because you're you're, you're feeling out a triple option team. So. I agree. I think this is a game where Army probably breaks a big play or two or three of them. Yeah. Um, and, you know, maybe get an 80-yard touchdown run or pull out a trick play and get a 60-yard touchdown pass. Something like that that irritates Notre Dame fans and makes them want to punch their TVs out. But I don't think you lose the game. I, I just – I think, you know, you might see a, a few plays pop. I think Army definitely has – more capabilities of scoring a touchdown on this team than Navy does. Yeah. Um, I think Army is definitely the better of the two teams, but I, I mean, they're, it's still a triple option team. It's a service academy. They don't have the best recruits. 
Yeah. It'll be hard for them to win. I think they can put a few points on the board, but nothing more than that, which yeah. in in turn is, a, I guess, would be a win for them. Um, yeah, yeah. But moving on to the last game of the season, you go on the road to USC. What are your thoughts on this one? To be honest, I'm not fully on the Miller Mice, uh, Miller Moss hype train, but to be honest with you, I'm not not on it either. Um, I think that Miller Moss is a little bit better of a fit, that he's going to fly a little bit more under the radar. I think that this USC team should be improved, in my opinion. And I don't think USC is going to make the playoffs or something, so this is going to kind of be their playoff game, despite what Lincoln Riley wants to do to the game and axe it. I, I think this is a loss for Notre Dame. I think that you could get a little bit too eager. The last couple of times that you've played at USC, you lost, you almost lost, and you lost bad. Um, or no, I'm sorry, you almost lost again in 2018. Or no, 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 I'm sorry. Okay, let's see here. You almost lost last year. And then, or no, sorry. At USC, you lost. Then you almost lost. And then you lost. Okay, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I'm screwing this up with it. Twenty <laughs> not happening. Well, with twenty not happening, it was. It, it, my point being is this: it's a tough environment to go in and play your rival, not to be in and participating and stuff like that. So, um, I think that you're going to be able to get away with that. So, I got the Irish losing that game there. But to be honest, I'm saying this: it's not that I have them losing to USC as much as I have them going eleven and one. I do want to preface that. Yeah, I also have them losing this game. I agree with you. I think USC is going to be in more improved than they were from last year. I think receiver-wise, they're still loaded. I think Miller Moss is going to be a better just pure passer in Lincoln Riley's system than Caleb Williams will be. I think that, that Miller Moss is going to fit more of the Baker Mayfield um, kind of Jalen Hurts type quarterbacks that – that uh that Lincoln Riley has coached in the past. I think he knows how to handle a guy like Caleb Williams. Obviously he won a Heisman and Kyler Murray won a Heisman. So yeah. he, he obviously knows how to handle those guys. But I, I think that his system better fits just a pure passer. And to me, Miller Moss is just better at that. Not that he has better attributes than Williams. He's just more patient. We'll sit in the pocket longer and look for stuff. I think the offensive line will be better. I think the defense will be better. I think USC will just be a better team. And like you said, they're playing – this is the last game of their season. They're giving it all they got. Um, you know, I think they'll make a bowl game, but for most of those guys, they're not going to be playing in the bowl game of the big guys. So, I think this is a game they go all out in, and I, I think that they come away with a, about a 7-10 to 10 point win over Notre Dame. So, you had them going 11-1. and one. I had them going 10-2. and two. Very good years. I mean, I think both of these scenarios should be good enough to sneak you into the playoff. Yeah, definitely my scenario. But yeah, I think ten and two, you can still get in. Yeah, um, it depends on how the at larges are play. It depends on how the SEC does beating each other up and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. I think rely on. So. I agree. I agree. Um, well, yeah. Well, that wraps up today's video. Make sure you guys check out the football expert on YouTube. Check out American Football Network on YouTube as well as College Football. We appreciate all of you guys watching, and we will see you all next time.